I'm Faith. And I'm Steve. And this is your friendly neighborhood home inspector. This week we're going to be discussing strange things that your home inspector might have found in your house. So what exactly are we covering? Well, this is one of our short little episodes where we just cover some strange stuff that I come across. So today we're going to talk about hidden rooms. I, uh, I've been doing this for a long time, 20 years now. And I've had a chance to probably find seven, maybe eight hidden rooms during my inspection. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I always, uh, I'm always excited when I find them. And sometimes I've been t- disclosed to me that they're there and I can't find them. And that's, that's frustrating uh, and fun. Now, what's the biggest giveaway for a hidden room? Ooh, so usually the, the tell is the floor trim. That's how I found most of the hidden rooms. What do you mean by like the floor trim? Is it does it, does it just miss a line? Is it is there like scraping on it? What about the floor Sometimes trim? Sometimes you're scraping. The ones I'm thinking of in particular is you'll have your your wall covering, your drywall, your plaster, and then there'll be a piece of floor you know floor trim along where the floor and the wall intersects, and they might have what's called quarter round below that, which is another little piece of trim. What I've usually found is there'll be a little slight deviation in the trim in a spot there shouldn't be one. And then I'll glance at the floor and look for marks or scrapes on the floor. Uh, often uh, the trim has the, the little break in it because it has a hinge point and it has to clear because you wouldn't be able to open the wall or the secret cabinet or the move the bookcase because it would hit, this, it would hit itself. So they have to make a little deviation in the floor trim. Have you ever found any hidden rooms that the homeowner didn't even know was there? Ooh, Yes. Yeah, that's a really great story. So, And that was because of floor trim. So I had uh, my buyers, my clients, the agent, and in this case, the homeowners uh, stuck around. So usually the homeowners are gone for the home inspection, but we had a full house. We had like seven or eight people. And I went to the upstairs part of the house. What I do is I... I do a survey of the house right when, when I arrive. I walk around and check out the interior rooms and I make a mental map of the house. And that's part of the reason I find these secret rooms is because things don't add up. I'm like, well, there's a space here that's not accounted for. And that's that's usually I, I can figure it out. And I need to have this mental map. So as I'm looking at the outside of the house and in the basement and the crawl space, I can picture what things are above me. So I have to do this very quickly and walk around the house just one time so to have it all mapped out. So in this uh, incident you just asked about, mm-hmm. I was in the upstairs of a house. It was probably 25 years old. I stepped into uh, an upstairs bedroom, and there was a young college kid. He was probably 22 years old. He was sitting on his bed, you know, reading a textbook or studying or something. And I looked around the room, and there was a built-in bookcase about four and a half feet tall built into the wall. And it had books on it and trophies and this and that. And I glanced down and saw a, a tiny little cut in the floor trim. So I just looked at it, noted it, and started my inspection. About an hour and a half later, I'm walking around the house, and I, I got my ladder, and I went to the attic through a closet, and I looked in the attic, came down, and I had the buyer there and the seller and the agent, and I said, well, I need to look in the other attic. The seller goes, there's no other attic. And I said, no, i got to look at the one in the front bedroom. And she goes, there's no attic in the front bedroom. <laughs> I didn't argue with her. I said, well, let's just go look. And I walk in there, and they all follow me in, and I walk over to the bookcase, and this was a little bit of luck because I didn't know where it would be, but I knew there would be a, a release latch. So I bent down about just above hip height, bent down and looked up underneath the bookshelf, and there was a little sliding uh, metal latch. And I leaned over, slid the latch over, grabbed the bookcase, and pulled it open. And behind the bookcase wasn't just another attic. It was a carpeted, drywalled, lit room. <laughs> and... The the buyer says, Steve, I wish you saw that kid's face. His jaw hit the ground. <laughs> and I turned to him and I looked at him. And I said, I said, don't worry. I was in this room for two or three minutes before I saw that. And <laughs> he goes, I have lived here seven years. I had no idea there was a room back there. And then his mom said, yeah, I bet you I bet you wish you had known there was a room back there for the last seven years. And then we all laughed. <laughs> so it was really pretty fun. That's a really cool story. Is, has that been your favorite hidden room that you found? What would you say your favorite was? Well, I was in a house here in Springfield. A builder, it was his house, he built it, and he built the house um, to accommodate a elevator. And, but he didn't put the elevator in, he just built the elevator shaft. 
because the equipment is expensive. So he, he sort of pre-manufactured this space for an elevator, thinking he's going to live there a long time and need the elevator. So he made a hidden room uh, on the middle floor until he put the elevator in, but he put his room behind the fireplace. So it's just like, you know, in the horror movies or in Batman. I can't remember what the release mechanism was, but he had a gas fireplace in the master bedroom. You had to release a latch, and then the whole thing pivoted out, and the fireplace could be on. It had a flexible gas oh, line. Wild. So you slide the whole fireplace open like a door and walk into this room. So that was a pretty cool one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Would that be the fit if you were to have a hidden room when you kind of want to do it I, that way? I think it'd be, I would want one like the Munsters where the stairwell has a, a counterweight and the stairwell opens up and then you can walk into the basement. Oh, that's awesome. That's the way I do it. Never encountered a hidden room like that yet? Not like that. A couple other ones I found. Uh, this one, I actually, I think I, I didn't find it. They had to show it to me. He told me there's a hidden room. Really big house. I walked all around it. I said, I can't find it. It was behind the um, wine cellar. So you go to this wine cellar, and the back wall of the wine cellar was a big, heavy wooden shelf, and it had a, a wood knob thing that you had to release. And that whole wall pivoted open, and it was a three-car a three garage behind that, below the three-car garage. That's why I couldn't find it, is because garages are built on grade. There's soil beneath them. And this guy built schools for a living, and he used what's called spancrete. So it's the same concrete that we'd use like in a parking garage. So he had suspended concrete garage floor, and he had a three-car space with not no garage doors, just a space as big as a three-car garage yeah. beneath the garage. That's awesome. Yeah, and you would never, no one would ever know it was there because it doesn't make sense for it to be there. And when, whenever you went back out, you you said it was in a wine cellar. So the back you, wall of a wine cellar. When you were looking at the back wall of the wine cellar, after you knew it was there, could you see it? Or was yeah, it still pretty camouflaged? Once, no, no. Once once I knew that wall moved, then I could see that the wall moved. I did my mental footprint. And so when I walked into the wine cellar, I said, well, that wall's beneath the garage. And so I stopped thinking about what was there. These other ones that I found, you know, I've walked through houses and I'll walk down a hallway around a bedroom and then I'll be in another room and then I'll say to myself wait a minute this room is six feet from that other room there's a space that's not accounted for and then I go back around and start examining it and I can like wait a minute these two walls are six feet apart what's in there and that's when I find the rooms there is an old house on the north side of Springfield they had on the disclosure they said secret room this is a 1910 house it's in secret room. It will not be uh, disclosed until after closing to the buyer. <laughs> and they said it was on the first floor. And I was actually in this house two times. I had to go back for something. I looked for that secret room. I really looked for that one. And I told the agent, I said, I go, I, I couldn't find the secret room, but I think it's on the, on the second floor. I said, I think there's a space here that I can't figure out. So I, I think they were giving a uh, false a false lead by saying it's on the first floor because they didn't want anyone they didn't want anybody to know about it uh until until after they closed in the house to, to keep it a secret that's that's very fun i think that i'd do that if i had a secret room right about how old was that house that was a uh, 1910 1920 oh that's a really really old, old house. house to have a secret room too yep oh, i know they're really the old houses like that have like a lot more compact rooms not so open flow it's a lot harder to hide them right mm -hmm. You know, we hit a hit a room, sort of hit a room in the house that you grew up in. Really? When we bought that house, we made a uh, full bathroom downstairs. And when I converted the bathroom to a full bathroom, I installed a fiberglass uh, shower enclosure. So the corner of the room I put that in had a small closet. And the shower was going to cover the closet door. So this closet is going to be lost until they remodel this 30 years later. I got, the, I got all the flooring, the walls, the shower equipment. I got it all ready. And before I installed the shower, I took a, a paper skeleton and I hung it in the closet because you have to have <laughs> skeletons in your closet. I wrote a couple notes about what we were working on and I put that in the closet. And then I went around and gathered all the magazines around the house. So there's about two and a half feet stack of magazines, old car magazines <laughs> um, piled up in this closet. And I think I threw some money in there, too. And then I put the shower in. And I thought, 
it would really be funny for somebody 30 years from now to be ripping that shower out and find 30, 40 year old magazines. They'll probably really appreciate that. <laughs> if they're not water damaged, at least. <laughs> not, not the way I put it in. They'll be fine. <laughs> okay, good. So these rooms, excluding the one that the homeowner didn't know was there. Right. Has there ever been anything in the rooms? Yeah, no no piles of gold. They're pretty boring inside. There might be, sometimes there's some like bug out, you know, stuff. They might have like a, a backpack and like, I think one guy was like a, bordering on a prepper. So he had some stuff in there, like uh, mm-hmm. maybe some guns and whatnot. Usually just a couple things stored in there. They just like the idea of having the hidden room. Well, yeah, they're really cool. Well, how would you want your hidden room to work? I don't know. Underneath the stairs is pretty cool. And that seems like the easiest way to like, completely hide it, based on what you're saying. You wouldn't be able to really tell with the trim. But I'd want to make it usable. Maybe like an office space, something that you'd go feel the need to go into every day. Maybe even something with a big glass ceiling, like right in the middle of a house. I think if I built, if I built a house and had an office in my house, I would love to have a hidden doorway that got me directly into the kitchen pantry. <laughs> so I have direct connection to the potato chips. Well, I don't know how you'd be able to hide it once you got into the pantry. Well, I'd have to have a hidden door in the pantry. You'd be like, I mean, I mean just a hidden pantry. <laughs> there you go. There we go. How are you going to restock it, though? You don't do the grocery shopping. Damn. <laughs> you could do it clue style where it comes up from the floor and they just have staircases underneath the house everywhere. Yes, yes. I'd have, I'd have to have Amazon drop ship to my, drop ship to my hidden pantry. <laughs> Not very hidden, then. No, no. <laughs> well, I think that covers everything. Am I wrong? I think we got it. Okay, well, I've been Faith. And I'm Steve. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you have any questions or any ideas for future episodes, email us the email in the description. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. This has been a Murawski Inspections podcast. If you want to know more about our services, visit our website at murawskiinspections.com.